The Senate on Monday finally concluded the screening of 45 of the 48 ministerial nominees of President Bola Tinubu, confirming them as cabinet members after a week of intense grilling for some and cursory introductions for others. Senate President Gosru Akpabio put the nomination to a series of voice notes of which all but three were approved. The remaining nominees including former Governor of Kaduna State Nasser El Rafai, Stella Okote Delta State, Abubakar Delandi Taraba State are said to still be undergoing security clearance. The confirmation of others comes over a week after Tinubu's transmission of a 28-member list to the Red Chamber on July 27th. Meanwhile, the Senate President Gosri Apabio has announced new chairman of some standing committees in the Red Chamber, President of the 9th Senator Ahmed Lawan Defense, former Governor of Sokoto State Aminu Tamula Housing, former Governor of Edo State Adams Oshomole Interior, but also some of the senators appointed to chair committees. Also appointed were Senator Godia Akwashiki Air Force, Boari Abdul Fatah Aviation, Osita Azuasu Capital Market, Cyril Fasuyu Establishment, Seriki Dixon Ecology Climate Change, Petroleum Downstreet Jide Ipasagba, Ali Wadada Public Account. The federal government has rejoined its contempt suit against organized labor in light of last Wednesday nationwide protest against the high cost of living. NLC President Joe Ajero said on Monday. The suit accused the Nigerian Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria of resisting on order restricting the unions from embarking on industrial action. Ajero stated that the National Executive Committee of the NLC had resolved to take further action on the position of the institution court and Ministry of Justice through the Solicitor General of the Federation. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission investigating allegations of corruption and abusing of office against the immediate past Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abu Bakr Malami. This was revealed in the memo dated July 19, 2023, signed by the Petition Registrar ICPC HS Fularami on behalf of the ICPC Chairman Professor Bolaji. The memo was in response to a petition filed by the Human and Environmental De Development Agency accusing the former AGF of corruption and high-handedness. There was a mild drama on Monday where former Integrated Payroll and Personal Information System Dex Officer at the Federal Character Commission, Haruna Kolo, accused of collecting bribes from job seekers in exchange for employment owned up by the allegation. This was just as he admitted to, to having received over 75 million naira from desperate job seekers on the instruction of the chairman of the FCC. Not done, Kolo claimed that the FCC boss instructed him to transfer the money to his personal account and pay her in cash, which he did a couple of times in her house. Kolo made the revelation at the ongoing investigative hearing by the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee investigating federal ministries, departments, and agencies, parasitals, and tertiary institutions on mismanagement of the IPPIS transportation. The Nigerian Niger Republic Railway Project may be at risk after the rupture of the diplomatic ties between Nigeria and Niger following the July 26 coup in President Mohamed Bazoum was ousted from the office by military officers led by General Abdurrahman Tichani. This came as over a thousand trucks conveying goods worth over 350 million naira to Nigeria and other West African nations have remained trapped at the borders for over one week following the closure of the respective gateways to the two neighboring countries. The federal government and the Nigerian junta has ordered the immediate closure of all land borders between two countries after the political development in the landlocked country. In 2021, the federal government revealed its plan to construct 284-kilometer rail line to the Niger Republic. According to former Minister of Transport, Rotimi Amichi, the project will cost the country about $2 billion and will be funded by Nigeria through loans from external sources. 
Officials of the Federal Capital Territory Administration on Monday demolished illegal structures on a piece of land belonging to the Transmission Company of Nigeria and for other infrastructure development in the Lugbe area. Addressing journalists after the exercise, the Director of the Department of Development Control, FCTA, Mokata Galdima, explained that the area popularly known as Timber Shield Market, Lugbe, was not approved. Galdima said the area located behind the high tension line was illegally occupied by the timber dealers, scavengers, and other sellers of low value items. He said that TCN has already awarded the contract to energize the power line, adding that the legal structures must be removed before the commencement of work. He further explained that the area was a cordon of the Ring Road 3, which connects Grandpa and the Public Service Institute along Onyx as well as Ling Siraj to the Apo Mechanic area. According to him, the operation is ongoing exercise to clean up Abuja City by removing all illegal structures wherever they exist. The second-ranking U.S. diplomat met Niger military leaders on Monday to press a reverse a coup that reported no headway a day after an ultimatum from the West African bloc ECOWAS was ignored. Victoria Nulan, a veteran envoy and acting deputy secretary of the state, said she met for more than two hours with military chiefs who hosted democratically elected Western ally Mohamed Bazoum on July 26. Nulan's trip conducted in secretary, secrecy until she left came after the expiration of a deadline set by ECOWAS to reinstate Bazoum by midnight, 23 o'clock on Sunday, or risk military intervention. The 15-nation bloc is recovering of its own diplomatic push on the crisis with the summit Thursday in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. Delegations from Mali and Burkina Faso's military government have assured Niger's military coup leaders of their full support in solidarity visit to General Abdulhamid Tichani in Naimi, the Nigerian capital. It comes as the regional bloc ECOWAS is set to have a summit on Thursday to discuss the next move against Niger junta. An ECOWAS deadline to reinstate President Mohamed Bazoum by Sunday was ignored by Niger military leaders. He's still being held captive. The junta has remained defiant in the face of sanctions and threats from ECOWAS, including the military intervention that the bloc said would be a last option. Morocco's coach Renal Pedras is eyeing a shock win over France team he knows perfectly in the last 16 of the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. Prior to becoming Morocco's boss, the ex-France international won five major titles, managing a Lions side containing six of the current French squad. Also, coach Lauren Donaldson said Jamaica has prepared for a boxing match with Colombia in Tuesday's Women's World Cup last 16 tie in Melbourne. Both sides were among the biggest surprises from the group state, with Jamaica progressing at the expense of Brazil, while Colombia won Group H.